All right, welcome back, everybody, to another fantastic episode of. Well, holy shit! There's only a few days left until the friggin' apocalypse. Um, again, apologize for the crappy mic. I don't have any money. Friggin' three, four hundred dollar DJI mics and shit. So, uh, if you do, great. That's not a, that's not a slam. Uh, just saying, like, apologize for the shitty audio. Um, so yeah, there's only a couple days left to the election. So let's just let's just do a recap because this is what I do when I'm super close. When we're super close, we count we count everything. So I went through my water jugs because I'm trying to like secure all my water jugs as much as I can. Five gallon water jugs. This is hilarious. I've counted three different types of water jug lid thingy me do's. I thought they were all uniform. They're not all uniform. They have different millimeters and different threads, and some of them have like kind of a kind of a rim around the top and other ones don't and all kinds so check your check so check that that's a fun that's a fun how do you do uh check that uh what's next um obviously check all your modern defensive stuff um what was the other thing oh yeah i wanted to yeah we'll just we'll just jump right into it um there's there's a lot of things like i usually don't talk about on the show uh cannibalism uh torture things like that but but when i do uh, let's talk about abortion the five of you that listen to this show that'll probably piss at least one of you off uh regardless of how you feel about abortion i have a question for you down in the chat tell me on a scale of one to ten how it would make you feel if every single day you got like five political ads uh, reminding you that abortion is a thing that exists over and over and over. We, we between between my wife and I, our, our collective ads for the last month is so, a giant stack of like anti-abortion ads uh, for some, from something that's not even true, uh, a political statement that's not even true um, from a candidate. And so you might say what does this have to do with anything besides the fact that the election's dumb and they like to waste and launder millions of dollars in anti-abortion ads well no technically they're pro-abortion ads but they're saying that a candidate is anti-abortion so they're 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 this reminds me of like maybe two years i can't remember when the last time this happened was but whenever a um whenever a candidate attacks another candidate on abortion you're effectively just getting stacks and stacks and stacks of pro-abortion ads saying that the other person's anti-abortion. And uh, I'm going to say abortion about a million times, so don't turn this into a drinking game. A and B, never going to get monetized anyway, because I don't even have enough um, enough view hours. Not even close. So abortion, abortion, abortion. Anyway, um, it's nuts to me because anyone with like two brain cells would just go look, first of all, and go, is this even true? And you know, it's like the, the candidate that they're attacking is just, I think they said that they were glad that abortion went, abortion rights went back to the states, which I still like think any sane person would prefer state rights over federal rights, regardless of what it is. Um, and people always go back to like, well, what about Flint, Michigan? That was a state having state rights and it going to shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Flint, Michigan their water situation was was a shit show and as still as far as i'm concerned nobody on the state level was even held liable even by its own state let alone by federal so i still don't know if that's a particularly good example of state rights but just like you know oregon has its completely own concealed carry permit that there's no reciprocity with the rest of the us you can disagree with state rights all you want and then just Support support your state staying staying the state that you want, like that's state rights, man. So there's so there's that can of worms. But here's the other thing. So not only does it take like two seconds to debunk and just understand that state rights are always going to be better than federal rights. I mean, look at drugs and guns and every other thing on the planet. But like you also have the fact that this isn't even out about abortion or women's reproductive care. Or however they want to brand it, women's right to choose and this and that, uh, women's health, like all these things they try to brand it, 
about it's not about any of those things. It's actually about attacking a candidate uh, and using single issue voters as a weapon against a candidate. And so what you'll hear is a lot of people going single issue voters are the problem and in this single instance you would be not that they're the problem but clearly a single issue voter is the target of this ad but i also wonder if you are a single issue voter and you're super 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 pro-abortion you just want to abort all the baby your mind's already made up so i don't understand why you would need 10 billion ads it's one of those uh, fake yellow jackets one of those teeny tiny mini fake yellow jackets yeah, yeah that's that's funny Dude, it's, uh, it is the end. It is the end of October, and there were wasps flying around earlier. I was like, you guys are on some some meth today. Uh, anyway, so, like, if you're just, like, the most pro-abortion person on the planet, you don't need 10,000 ads reminding you that the person that you already hate doesn't feel the same way as you on abortion. If you're already pro-life, 10,000 ads isn't going to change you. And if you're in the middle... I don't understand how you could have missed the first 5,000 ads <laughs> telling you about it. It would be impossible. I mean, if they spent this much time sending mail to everybody about protecting women against trafficking, or I'm, try I'm trying to think of like something else that would warrant sending out 10 million pieces of mail, or, or trying, to find a missing, trying to find a missing child, or... Or trying to dig up info on a cold case. Like, what on earth would justify sending, like, this much mail to somebody about something? So I don't... So I'm always curious, like, whenever I see an ad... Well, and really, this is a PSYOP, to be clear. Who is... Who is this... Who is this for? Who is this ad for? But at the end of the day, the only conclusion that I come to is this ad isn't for anybody. It's just money laundering, and they're just using... The topic of abortion to launder shit loads of money. Ten million dollars. Obviously not all of it is spent on this piece of cardboard that says how much somebody hates abortion, even though it's not even what even what happened. That's you know, an angry face. Abortion ban. Like there's somebody somewhere literally and figuratively printing millions of dollars worth of cardboard. They're killing trees, man, for these this card that's not even true, sending it out to all four corners of the state. And it's just like, dude, this isn't swaying a single person because it is such an, a massively, massively galvanizing thing that like nothing... Oh, the horse, the horse is sassing me. He knows the horse. I don't know. My neighbor's horse. I don't have a horse. Um, I can't... I, there, there's so many other things that could actually be saving saving human lives that they could be spending that money on if they really cared if they really cared about women's reproductive rights they could use that 10 million dollars to actually help victims of domestic violence they could actually help women that are being trafficked instead they don't and you can go to any main city and everybody can tell you exactly where the women are being trafficked in every city because everybody knows it. You can go on the news, you can search for any city, and there are YouTube videos of every single city where it's happening. They don't care about protecting women's rights. Uh, or, or if they did, they would stop the, the massive, massive wave of illegals that are... They're, they're, that their culture is not compatible, and they do horrible thing to to young vulnerable populations. Or they would track down the homeless predators that are preying on vulnerable women in the unhoused community on a daily basis. Uh, any of which is all is all also on the news. Uh, how do you think homeless women are getting pregnant? Like, I mean, they there's. They explain that they're being attacked and that they have a code saying they don't go to the cops and that going to the cops doesn't do anything anyway, and then they just are more victims. So these these bleeding heart lefty loos that act like they're the, the most virtuous thing on the planet are the biggest freaking hypocrites on the planet. And I'm not saying that the rhinos and the the fake the fake new what I call the new magas 
that are just dipping their foot in and all the grifters. I'm not saying any of them are any better because they're not. However, none of them are sending me giant, 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 giant stacks of abortion material. So it's crazy. It's crazy to me. It's like you guys, you guys disseminated a talking point down to one of the most like horrible things that a family is ever going to have to go through. You distilled it down to a piece of cardboard that you're printing tens of thousands of times. The fuck is wrong with you? Is your brain rot? Is your brain rotten? Like, like what, what causes people to just be like, yeah, that's so what'd you do on Saturday? So how's, how's your printing company doing? I don't know. I just printed out a hundred thousand more abortion ads that aren't even real. Oh, cool. Cool, man. Get that fat Democrat super PAC money. And the thing is, like, it's not going to matter soon, right? Like, North Korea is sending even more troops to Russia. They've been training for a month. Like, all this, all this money moving around right now is just to, like, try to get one more congressman, congress, congress person up at the federal level so they could have, like, so the lefty lose can have another possible, you know, seat to their side and it's the same thing with like ranked choice voting like they gamed the system in alaska there's a lot of youtube videos switching topics now kind of by the way it's super nice out here i'm wearing a hoodie but like it's like 60 degrees and like no wind it's absolutely gorgeous out you know i got i got all my main stuff done so i just get to like chill the homestead's as ready as it's gonna get anyway just can't believe how nice it is ranked choice voting go look up what it did to alaska it flipped Alaska, which is insane. They were able to, like, weaponize the votes to, like, give the people that they didn't like, like, a higher ranking. And it would kick out other people that actually, like, had a chance that other people liked. I was explaining the whole, was it ice cream? No, I wasn't using the ice cream. I was using, like, Burger King versus Wendy's. That's right. Other people are using, like, ice cream, but that doesn't work. It'd be like if you don't want to go to Burger King. In fact, I I, <laughs> I would have used an excuse, like, you want to rent, you want to rent a movie, but, like... You pick a movie that everybody else doesn't like, so they pick the movie that you want. That's like what ranked choice voting is, in a nutshell. That's Well, that's how you weaponize it, anyway. That's not how it's supposed to be used, but that's how they use it. It's like, uh, I can't remember what the other thing is called, but it's when uh, a bunch of people, like, vote for the other side in, like, a primary. To, like, you could, you could, like, split your votes between two people on your own side and perfectly divide your two votes to, like, or yours and all your buddies' votes to, like, kick other people out and get primary. It's insane. Anyway, there's so many different ways to weaponize the uh, weaponize an election. And so, like, ranked choice voting, they're not going to know for, like, a month. All they do is just, like, screw around and try to find sneaky-ass ways, whether it's gerrymandering, whether it's bringing in, like, illegals to screw with the census. They All they do is just spend all their time screwing with everything. Like lying about guns and saying gun violence gun violence inner city youths and all this is like they spend so much time like changing the names and definitions and lying about everything if they just put that energy towards fixing everything they could have the world that they wanted they wouldn't be like so damn dysfunctional that's but like what would you do about rhinos i don't know they never know what they want i think if you had i think if you brought the left closer to the middle or if the left was actually functional i would almost guarantee you that massive massive swaths of rhinos would uh massive massive swaths of um rhinos would switch to uh uh the left if the left was actually even remotely functional sorry that was probably blowing up my mic again i still don't have like a really good way of setting all this up I have to take my phone case off, and then my phone is like a slippery little, slippery little silly bar of soap. I don't want it to go flying. Because, I mean, I have launched this phone off the porch before, and I really don't want to do it without the case on it. <laughs> anyway, it kind of gets really warm to hold one. So, anyway, blah, blah, blah. The point is, you can't trust the system. No, the point is, if everybody would just stay in their damn lane and just all work for like the greater good the greater good what's the greater good the greater good if everyone just woke up and said like hey let's actually just try to do a good job today and not be pieces of shit 
the world would just be a better place. But you have half the people. What if I put it down here? I guess it could like fall between the cracks or something. That'd be bad. Anyway, you put it down there. Like I just I think about this like at work every day. You've got like twenty percent of the people doing like eighty percent of the work. You got the other eighty percent of people either not doing anything or just dragging everybody down. And it's just like they won't just take themselves out of the equation and and uh, you can take that to mean however you want. But they have to like actively drag everybody down too in this whole quiet quitting and fake fake working and work, you know, work theatrics. Meanwhile the rest of us are just busting our asses and burning out. And that's just like a metaphor for everything. Speaking of which in my water my water bottles, when I was checking my water bottles, there was bugs and like moss in one of them. I'm like, man, this is like bleached water. How the hell did bugs and moss get in this thing? So check your water. Check your water jugs. I'll deal with it tomorrow or something. That's just crazy. Crazy. I'm going to have to dump all that water out. Anyway, it's fix. It's fixable. I'll just figure these things out now before shit gets bad. Um, I just can't, you know, I'm, I'm burning myself out like crazy on this project. And the more responsibility I take on, the more is given to me and the less everybody else has to do. And I'm realizing more and more now just how fragile like snowflakes people are and yeah you don't know what everybody's going through blah 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 blah. but like you realize in life that there are people that can take on way more than like a normal person and i just think like i want to be better i want to get better i want to do better i want to keep i want to keep prepping i want to keep making heads this was a very successful summer even though we didn't really particularly produce very much there's still tomatoes ripening um and i know if there isn't a full-on collapse. I'm positive next year that oh, Mocha, Mocha is really being a dick. I can hear dirt bikes, so I wonder if someone took some dirt bikes. Um, uh, the gnats, the gnats found her. Um, just if I feel this way, it always just makes me think like the people that really are like absolute fucking losers and don't ever accomplish anything. But like I don't know, maybe somehow they just found a job that just lets them do absolutely nothing and just pays them for being a fucking loser. Like, how do those people get through life? And all I can really think of is they drink their asses off and do shit tons of drugs. And, uh, or they're just like blissfully ignorant and they just have never looked in the mirror and go, you know what? I'm a fucking piece of shit that doesn't accomplish anything, do anything or help. Like, people that go on vacations just disgust me more than anything. You gotta be able to wind down, you gotta be able to get away from it. But some people's brains are wired different and they just enjoy that stuff. But, like going to the vacation going to like a vacation at the beach just seems like a lie like i want to go to the beach and stay at the beach for like a long ass time <laughs> i don't want to go to a vacation uh to the beach i want to go to the beach and freaking stay there um i don't want to go to like a vacation i want to go to the i don't i don't know how people can get like little micro doses of what something enjoyable would be and then be like okay cool that was good enough I mean, if you're just going to go see the Space Needle, I mean, I get it, right? But, like, we live on this beautiful planet. Uh-oh. The cows are starting the circle. They're probably pissed that I fixed their fence. Like, you motherfucker, we were so close. Um, like, how can you just, like, microdose something? I mean, you could say there's too much of a good thing, like, but I know people who want to just keep skiing and skiing and skiing. You go up for the weekend. That shit just, like, disgusts me. I mean, you need to, like, rest sometimes, but, like, anyway, you can, like, mountain bike and, you know, camp. But, like, someone who goes, and, like, mountain bikes and then drives all the way back. Like, why don't you go make your life the thing that you want? And I feel like during the Rona, so many people did that. And were, like, finally their true selves. And then the man tried to take it all away. And said, no, you can't be your true selves. You gotta come live in the city. You gotta come be around other people. You gotta come get rid of your car and live in your 10 minute city with all the crime where you can be in under even more surveillance and even less security. I saw the uh, I saw the security upgrades for the light rail and all the security they showed showed were just these like 400 pound whales uh, that are supposed to be security. I'm not even sure how they fit on the map, which is the name of the light rail. And then they showed a bunch of people in the ops center, like, watching the five million cameras. I'm like, motherfucker, 
Oh, so they can see on a camera when somebody gets, like, pushed in front of a train, like, that's where you want everybody to live? And I, I kind of alluded to this maybe yesterday. They said they cleaned up all the, you know, they're supposed to be cleaning up all the garbage, yada, yada, yada. But just <clears throat> all the homeless did was just, like, pick up and just immediately build new camps. Like, sometimes in exactly the same spots. The mountains of garbage are just insane. And and I didn't get into this yesterday. I was trying to keep yesterday's kind of short. You would need a full-time, fully staffed, almost like two-part organization. Like, if you were going to keep a major m- metropolitan area clean. And I don't, I don't mean the garbage. Sir. You would need people. You would need hundreds of people doing nothing but removing homeless camp and cleaning up homeless camp and getting people into rehab over and over and over you need hundreds of full-time staff per day and i don't mean those uh those mental health care workers and i don't mean cops and police i just mean like in sheer staff and you would probably have to double your garbage department uh, because they would be doing nothing but running dumpsters out of your city and i think uh, not to contrast these two things, but a uh, very, very similar issue in the App- Appalachians. Uh, they are going to be shoveling garbage out of the Appalachians probably for years um, with just the sheer amount of destruction that happened. And that's exactly what the cities are like. These hoarders who are used to losing everything every day hoard every single thing that they can and just create mountains of garbage and rodents and viruses and you could argue whether or not there's enough houses for them and some of them don't want to go to rehab but like i always go back to that if you let's pretend you're in charge of a city and somebody just goes i don't want to get out of rehab or i don't want to i don't want to go to rehab i do not want to rehabilitate and i do not want to be a functioning member of society the cities do not have an answer to that and that is what they have to answer they have to keep their vulnerable safe and they need to have an answer and throwing them in jail the problem is there's tons of drugs in jail so you need like a drunk tank you need tons of drunk tanks like and a lot of them would probably die in the withdrawal process but like right now it was it was on the thing last night uh they have these trucks that just drive up with drugs in them and they give out free drugs. The exact same drugs that the drug dealers give out. Except dealing drugs is illegal in theory. But these like uh, safe, they're called safe drug distribution. Which nobody will say who's funding them. It's all the same nonprofits. Basically the nonprofits are buying drugs for drug addicts. You can go look it up if you want. It's insane. So how do you, you know, so they can have safe crack pipes and safe needles even though they don't hand out the sharp containers. So the people, they, they help the people take the drugs on the street. And this is, uh, this is practically on school property in one case uh, that's going on right now. And um, it's not illegal that they are giving drugs out and doing drugs and shooting heroin and taking meth and whatever, fentanyl, practically on school property in broad daylight, giving it out for free as a part of some kind of nonprofit thing. And people going on like multi-day bender this is all on video like how do you reconcile that and if the city cannot reconcile that nothing matters like what they need to do you know they have all these mayors and blah 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 blah. they just need to say if you do not have a plan over what to do with people that refuse mental health care and refuse drug addiction care they refuse rehab, period, full stop. They need to go somewhere else, and I don't know what where that is, but it shouldn't be in civilized society, and it shouldn't, and prison doesn't work either. So, like, they do not want to be sober. They do not want to be in a functioning society. And if I was going to tie all this up and act like this was all part of my plan to tie all this up into a single thread, it would be that that just drugged out, it's not even hopelessness, it's just, in my opinion, just getting drunk or just taking drugs and shit is just laziness. And sure, I don't know what people go through, but I, I don't care. Um, you have to be strong enough to either admit you need help or pick your ass up and help other people and start watching each other's back. 
and be a team because like things are gonna get worse things are gonna get way worse and the thing that bugs me the most about all this and i was confused at first but then i started seeing more of it the people that are getting high on fentanyl aren't 60 year old people that have lost everything and they're just grumbly and they look like old withered up crusty crabby prunes the people getting high on fentanyl now and i mean like i don't mean getting i mean like getting unconscious on fentanyl are like young college kids that look completely otherwise like totally normal functioning type college college kids it looks really bad they have a car that's not destroyed and they're wearing decent clothes and they're just passed out along with everybody else like that doesn't seem right to me like if i was the mayor or something and this is this is gonna sound i don't want this to sound bad but like if you see two who appear to be affluent young adults passed out from fentanyl that should raise some red flags okay like that seems to be bad now you could like the fact that fentanyl is a big chemical weapon is it's already really bad. i just mean like we went a couple years ago to George Floyd uh, plus fentanyl plus extenuating circumstances equal massive, massive, massive civil unrest uh, to uh, Penny, who had a guy in a hold, died. They narcanned him whether or not he was on fentanyl. I'm not sure he's ever been released, so I don't know. To the fact that, so I'm, and this is like a transition. To us transitioning to like, Fentanyl being so normal that you could see two college-age-looking, affluent, young adults passed out in a car from fentanyl. Like, how did how did we get, like, even a few years ago, that would have freaked the fuck out of people if they saw that. I mean, I remember it wasn't, it wasn't too long ago that just, like, seeing, seeing the old, the old crusty, you know, having a seizure or ODing would have been, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? jarring no it would have evoked some kind of emotion um someone would have tried to call 911 someone would have tried to save them uh it would have been bad for their health and it wouldn't have done anything but like i don't want to say it's like a lack of empathy i think people are just shutting their brains off and they're they're com they're compart it's not empathy they're like compartmentalizing reality to like the tiniest tiniest box they can to where i'm not sure that they can feel anything anymore like right now i'm pretty sure like there's a horse and a calf over there talking about something because they keep they keep sniffing at each other and the calf is like tilting tilting her head up trying to give the horse kisses or something like <clears throat> but meanwhile in the city there's kids over being overdosing over on uh, on fentanyl they could be playing the new Black Ops. Like, I don't know. They could be doing, like, literally anything else. And I just, I don't, I think that it is way worse. I think, I think it is way worse than people realize. There are, there are only a few people in each city <clears throat> that, that dare photograph and talk about this stuff. And I remember, I remember what started me on a lot of this journey back when I was on one of those shitty neighborhood chatting programs, <clears throat> some gal was like, we had a massive homeless camp down the street and uh, people were going missing and stuff. And people were like, well, did you check the homeless camp? And um, I didn't say that, but I was like, yeah, that seems like there's problems. I, I heard those people are starting to rob the, or starting to steal stuff from the, uh, from the hospital. <laughs> and some, uh, some gal, some wonderful neighborhood Karen your, na your local neighborhood HOA Karen said to me, well, why don't you go talk to them sometime? They're not that bad. And I'm like, first of all, what makes you think that I don't talk to them? And I said, second of all, do you really think that you would feel safe walking in the middle of one of their homeless camps? Like, they're extremely territorial, and they're going to immediately know that you're not a part of them, and they're going to be suspicious as to why you're there. It takes a long time. A, it takes a long time to build up a reputation with a homeless community. Uh, and if you're not from around there, and if they just decide they don't like you or they don't want you to film or they or it's Tuesday or they think it's Tuesday, they're going to come after you with hatchets and axes and machetes and 
saws and shit. Like, they have zero to lose. Zero. In fact, in a lot of ways, they get rewarded because they're going to go to jail and get three hots in a cot and they're going to be safe. Total lawlessness. They cannot be held responsible for anything. It is a whole layer of society with absolutely no consequences. And if we do anything about it, we're the bad guys. Like, it takes a long time to build up trust with a homeless community, and they could still just completely have a psychological break and lose it. So I always thought it was comical to say, have you ever gone and talked to them? And I write a lot in my books about homeless people. I try not to cast them in too bad of a light. I think that tragically... Uh, a significant portion of them are military vets, and uh, we could be doing way better. I think once you've served your country, uh, you should be, t- I'm going to say taken care of, but I don't mean it in a bad way. They should. You should be taken care of for the rest of your life if you've served our country and you put your life on the line. And instead, they're, they, they roam the streets and they're having trouble and we're not doing anything about it. Instead, all our money's going to Ukraine and all of our money's going to the Middle East, and we're funding both sides of everything. So it's like all the people that complain could be doing something in there. And I used to be critical of people who moved away and then just like took themselves out of the equation. But I think it's because I've always believed if you move further out, you have the responsibility of getting everything ready for your buddies who can't move out. However, I also think it should be up to them to realize, you know, that and help support everybody that. And so you can have this kind of symbiotic relationship. Instead, what I found way too many times is people move even a little bit out and then just drop right off the radar. And I don't think that's productive. Um, I think you have to have like a symbiotic relationship uh, with people in town making money, bolstering up the rural areas and getting ready for shit it's the fan uh unfortunately it's so stinking hard to trust people and to have those mature conversations but you've got to you've got to have those mature conversations and say if you want to cash things out here that's great but only take the people out here that you've cashed for or there's going to be a really uncomfortable conversation that happens and don't tell everybody about it or there's going to be a really uncomfortable conversation that happens and furthermore hence moreover i think there needs to be the, the mentality spread around that property will be defended as if that very property was a direct extension of life. If you take somebody's food, you are, in essence, depriving them of life. If you take somebody's medical stuff, you're depriving them of life. It's not only things that they've prepped and it's their property and it's their money they sacrificed and you didn't sacrifice. Like, I'm not a lawyer. None of this is medical, dental advice about anything legal advice this none of this is legal advice but like if you destroy somebody's property and that property could be argued as like a direct life-giving source to somebody i think it should be able to be defended as life and i know just for so many states right now that is not the case and they go well they attacked your barn and that barn's not connected to your house so you can't say that them, you know, taking up residence in your barn is a direct threat to you. It's like, that is just such stupid-ass mentality. Um, and it's really no different, honestly, than if you have a house on a main street, and all of a sudden there's a tent outside your house on the main street. It's like, well, technically that's public property. And it's like, yeah, but they're staging right outside my house. And that's what's happened to a gal, uh, where she's ha- she has the black ninjas right outside her house, three, four, or five black ninjas harassing her every night, and they're just working up. They're working up the courage to to do to do worse things to her, and she can't do anything about it. If she does anything to defend herself, it'll only escalate. Obviously, they all know where she lives. There's nothing she can do to defend herself, and it's a lame duck DA until January, even though he should have transitioned to power like six months ago lost so like you have to you're gonna have to figure out what you're gonna have to figure out for your situation and it's gonna be tricky in these interim times when there's still kind of a rule of law most of the time but it's just it's gonna be tricky there's gonna have to be what i will call uh some pretty some pretty difficult 
some pretty difficult conversations, uh, people are going to disagree. And that's the, that's, it's okay to ha have a healthy conversation, but like, the problem is, is if you're all holed up on a homestead somewhere and two different, and two people disagree on how to be defending that homestead, it's just going to be like, it's going to be a mess. You can't be like an absolute ruthless, brutal psychopath, but you're going to have to figure out some way to be like, the stuff on this property has to stay on this property, and people who don't have investment in the belongings on this property don't get a vote in what happens to the things on the property, and that they stay here and they're, they can't be removed from here. But you also can't let people stage up right next to you either, or stage in your barns or whatever. Like You have to find a way to keep people out of your barn, well, out of your shed, well, in the city. In the city, it's out of your tool sheds. That used to be a huge problem. People would get in your tool shed and you can't kick them out, or people would get in your uh, your Airbnb and you couldn't get them out. Like you have to have some really difficult decisions, and it might be uh, renting out your Airbnb to the biker gang uh, for a weekend. Um, and usually, uh, you know, I chastise people for the whole biker gang thing, but I will say uh, there are services where you can rent your Airbnb to to uh, to folks that will will help clear the place out for you. For a nominal fee so you're gonna have to have those difficult discussions all right well the uh the cloud cover has cometh and it is cooled down uh happy friday and if everything permits i'm gonna try to do more of these as we go up to the election and just try to get y'all in the right mindset so get your asses out there and responsibly get some prepping done as long as there's still food on those shelves get a couple more cans of something time i don't think i don't think people are going to be freaking out until right after halloween so there's there's still time folks there's still time i'm gonna sign off but i appreciate y'all and talk to y'all in the next one uh leave a comment down below saying saying something okay i forgot what uh, oh oh i remember uh leave a comment down below if you like the pauses in uh, in between words that I say. I know that sounds dumb, but it's something I'm working on. Uh, let me know. Talk to y'all later. Bye.